Good afternoon, everyone. This, I welcome you back to the second half of our interview with Bishop Donald DeGrood. Uh, as you know, uh, living the little way is about doing what Christ calls us to do, and certainly uh, how he calls us to be part of this uh, diocesan imperative called Set Ablaze, where we look at reorganizing the diocese and the personnel to better serve you. Without any further ado, I welcome you back to our interview with Bishop DeGroot. Talk a little bit more about fear, because I think that is one of the most pernicious things that we experience as Catholics. Yeah, fear is a very, very strong emotion, and it can uh, overpower even our capacity to be reasonable in whatever we do. So one of the things that has helped me is St. Thomas Aquinas, in some of his teaching, speaks about how our passions, so like uh, the desires that we have, one of those passions can be fear, and fear has a really good place. Like if there's, we see a kid crossing a street and there's a car coming, right? It should impel us, if the kid doesn't know, to, to intervene, right? So that fear of the kid getting hurt is actually a really good thing. But there's a type of fear that actually, uh, so that part is good, but fear can absolutely like just freeze us up. And I, I can relate to that in my own life, like I shared in my own journey of fear of inadequacy, like I can't do that. The key is we need to take that to reason and say, is this a reasonable fear? And when we really pray about that, St. Thomas Aquinas speaks about how the passion should be governed by reason. Our reason enlightened by faith, well, what does God reveal to us? Love casts out all fear. Well, what does that mean? That means if we draw closer to the love of God, we're going to have what we need to overcome every single fear in our life. That's an inordinate fear, like the unhealthy fear. And then to be motivated by love. So the reason the apostles would go out is they had that personal encounter with Christ. They had the grace of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. And they went out into the public and they were, as we know, uh, ridiculed. They were, mm. you know, sent to, into prison. They were, all kinds of things happened to them. But, but it didn't, they, they didn't have that inordinate fear anymore because the love of God had so captured their hearts. And they were willing, like the martyrs, to lay down their life. They didn't care what happened. Even, okay, they're going to take my life. But the love of God is so great at that point. That's why the personal relationship is so important. Let's go back for a minute to this idea of a missionary discipleship, which, of course, we are now experiencing in a new way with Set Ablaze. Um, we are looking at new ways that we can um, reorganize structures to make it better for us to be able to be missionary disciples and spread the word of Jesus Christ. Yet, we are also human and we become attached to institutions and organizations that we feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I do, you do, all yes. of us do. And when we are asked maybe to change, it causes apprehension and fear in us. Um, and, and at least from my estimation of fear, fear is from the evil one mm -hmm. too, you know. Yes. He can use that to uh, steer us away from doing what we need to be doing. Speak a little bit, Bishop, about how, uh, as we approach Set Ablaze, as missionary disciples of Jesus Christ uh, for life and also in his love, how we can overcome that fear of change. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's a very normal thing. And so hopefully we won't have shame around that. Like, I really love what we have, and I don't want us to, uh, to, uh, to lose that. It's a good thing to celebrate that, right? To celebrate what the Lord has blessed us with in the places we've been and the sacraments that are celebrated, for example, in the church, the relationships we have, whether it's with each other or the priests that we have, right? It could be any of these things. So first of all, it's really important to celebrate the good things. It means a lot to us. That's a good thing, all right? But I think if, as we tie this with fear, the fear of losing what we have can often inhibit us from um, what the potential is that God has for us that's even greater. Now we might say, well, how can it be greater than what we have? This is what I mean. One of the um, gifts of the Holy Spirit is fear of the Lord. 
And it's actually a fear of losing that which is most important. The most important thing is a deepening friendship with God and deepening friendship with others. So that even the places then don't have as much of a hold on us as I don't want to lose what God has planned for us as we move into the future. It is totally God's providence. We have the number of priests we do, the circumstances we have in our diocese. It's all God's providence. He's allowing it. And he's going to bring about something even greater, which at this point we can't see it. And so it can be really hard to trust that. So we have to have that sense of prayer of, Lord, bring great things out of this. Bring great things of this set of blades to help all of us, laity, consecrated, and the clergy, see what God can bring out of it. Let me just give one example. One of the great stirrings in my heart through all of this has been to really, as I've described to the clergy, think of all of the gifts of the clergy that we have. If we use the example of priests, think of it as a warehouse of resources, natural gifts and supernatural gifts. Then we look at, okay, how can we spend more of our time focused on those spiritual gifts to help souls on the way to heaven? So one of the ways this can happen is, uh, as in so many parishes already, when laity are really actively involved with a lot of the administrative and, you know, whether it's finance, facilities, those sorts of things, it frees up the priests to be able to be doing more things like confessions and spiritual direction and prayer or homily prep, whatever it might be. So part of my hope and my goal is we, can, we haven't yet tasted what it can become. But I'm, I'm excited to see what it's going to mean for some of the priests when they don't have to be tied down so much by the administrative things. It actually frees them to be even more missionary in the sense of being able to get out amongst the people more or visit the homebound or maybe things now they might find it difficult to find time for because they got so much administrative things to do. Fear is <clears throat> what they call a rapacious creditor. It's something that keeps taking and doesn't give much back if it's, if it's let go. Uh, and I, I believe that as we are moving in these new directions, that God is going to take care of us. The Lord always takes care of us. Yes, he does. Um, the reality is I have to open my heart to say, Lord, I trust you and I am going to entrust my life to your care. Um, and then to be, I think, uh, conscious of how that is going to impact other people as we go and be uh, empathic to them and help them mm -hmm. along the journey too, which I think you are so good at doing. It's, um, Thank you, Father. It's not going to be easy, nope. uh, but we've been doing it for the 200 years that this diocese has been around and we've been doing it ever since the time of the apostles. Yes. You know, you were talking about um, going in new directions. I can imagine some of those apostles were thinking, you know, I don't think I want to go to Rome. I don't think I want to go to India or any other number of places. But they took that mm -hmm. risk and they did. And great things happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, you know, you reminded me, Father, is... Uh, it's often in the vulnerability that we discover it makes room for the Lord to bring about new things. Or if I entrust something to someone else and then I see the great things that God brings out of it. Um, it's so exciting. That's one of the beautiful gifts of being a pastor. When you get to see other people, you entrust things to them and you see them just do amazing things. It's like, wow, this is like a privileged thing to see the laity coming alive, you know, whether it's leading Bible studies or whatever the things might be. Uh, and that's the way the Lord intended it to be. Because if the Lord wanted to stay here, he could have stayed here. But he chose. He said, it's better that I go than if I stay. And then he, because he wanted to have the apostles and then all of the disciples and all of us step into that role of being Christ in the world. And of course, it's all over the place because it can be in every single one of us. One of the <clears throat> words that comes to my mind right now is comfortable. You know, it's it's easy to be comfortable but if you're comfortable you're not always doing something you're just existing and I think uh, we have to face the reality as I've said uh, many times to parishioners this is not a spectator sport yes. <laughs> we've got to be involved and immersed in it um, and I think that that's what you're calling us to 
to stay immersed and busy and about this business of changing in the right direction toward the Lord. Yeah, and I think Lent's such a great time for it too, of course, you know, where we're taking more time for prayer, fasting, almsgiving, whatever our things that we might all be doing, is really to step back and say, what are we doing and why are we doing it? And is it leading us to the ultimate goal? And how many people are we helping along the way? So it's not just us, like, oh, I got to do everything I can to get to heaven. Or it's not even just, say, parents with their kids. It's, no, everybody around me, that's the call to be a disciple, is to evangelize to everybody. Evangelize meaning sharing the good news of the gospel. What does that look like in my life? How happy that makes me, how free uh, I am. And drawing in relationship to the Lord gives us what we need so we don't stay complacent. Because your point is right. It's very easy to be comfortable, to go back what's easy, and then it can be easier, easier, and easier instead of really progressing forward. You, at the very beginning of our talk t today, you talked about having a relationship when you were young with Jesus that was kind of the vertical up and down. This is me, this is Jesus. And yet the cross has both uh, the up and down in the, yes. and the horizontal ones that reach out to other people. And that's what I think you're addressing here. Yeah, and you know, when I think of uh, God himself, right? So God, the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, they could have just kept it amongst themselves. Mm. But the nature of divine love actually seeks the good of the other. And so God wanted to share that love, and so he created us in his image and likeness. And then he blessed us with everything here on earth that we get to enjoy, uh, including relationships with others. So he didn't just keep it like, just keep it amongst us. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let's just enjoy this great communion of life and love forever. Yes, they would. They wanted to share it. That's the nature of it. So when we fall in love with the Lord, that's what happens to us. It's actually not just this, it, but it's this that helps us then to be able to go, actually, I want to help others on the way to heaven. And it really animates the life of a parish. In a very real sense, I think it's, it's really not just from birth to death, it's from birth into eternal life. Yes. And that's where we're going. And part of what we always are doing is saying, even if I rest in the grave for a short time, it's not the end of the journey. Yes, that's what we, uh, we look forward to the resurrection. And uh, as we're getting closer to Easter coming up here, that's what we're preparing for. And the power of Christ over sin and death. So back again, even to the inadequacy, some of us might feel, well, I'm not good enough to lead a Bible study because of this, that, or the other thing, whatever the thing. No, let God recreate us today and each day. And then we grow more fully in our life and our love. But that relationship with God is first. So the Dominicans have this great saying that our apostolic works, meaning the reaching out to others, kind of your point of the cross this way, should come from our contemplation, meaning our intimacy first with God. And of course, Therese did that in such a beautiful way. This intimacy was so great that then she wanted to pray for everybody out here and offer sacrifices in the monastery, sweeping the floors, you know, doing whatever the things uh, Therese all did, but doing it with great love, right? That's the key. Do it with great love that we first receive in this relationship. And then it's not only here, but it's extended outwardly. Which interestingly has made St. Therese one of the most popular saints in the last century. That uh, people flock to her intercession and ask her to intercede for them with the Lord. Yeah, you know, I think a good testimony of that is in France, the, the huge basilica that they built there and the number of pilgrims that come there asking for her intercession and uh, want to learn more about her or visit. I think my, in my own heart, in my own experience of Therese is because, because she's so ordinary in a certain way, she's relatable. Because just to do the ordinary things with great love, it's like, oh, I guess maybe I can do that, right? Meaning, Oh, it's, it's in the ordinary things. And I think that really has helped many of us who feel like, well, the saints are these kind of people. Maybe even some of us feel like that about us as, as priests or deacons or as a bishop. Like, oh, well, that, but that's, they're holier than I am, <laughs> right? Or that's their job. When we come to realize that, no, actually, holiness is based on charity. It's based on love of God and love of others. 
So the most common, ordinary job, whatever that might be in the world, that person might be a much greater saint. Not saying of you, Father, of course, but maybe of me, right? Or any of us. Because the measuring stick for greatness in heaven is charity. You know, it's interesting <clears throat> that you bring that up. You know, originally St. Therese was not named St. Therese. It was a different parish, and Monsignor Cavanaugh uh -huh. asked hmm. to rename it because St. Therese had just recently been canonized, uh -huh. and he knew hmm. her story, and he would say to the people, this is a nickel and dime parish. You know, I need your nickel and dimes to build this church so we can give glory to God and reach out to others. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's adequate and appropriate that he named, <laughs> renamed it to St. Therese. Yeah, and you can even see in your uh, church space, there's a certain simplicity to it. And of course, the Carmelites have a great love for the sim simple, right? So the whole goal is to be emptied of self so that the fullness of God enters yep. in. And then, of course, so we're focused on the right, right stuff within that. So I think, um, yeah, just drawing closer to the Lord, let him anim animate us with his life and love. But beautiful to hear how that um, evolved, right? Well, I thank you so much, Bishop, for taking time with us this afternoon. You're this welcome. will be aired over two weeks. Okay. Um, and again, uh, just as a final closing comment for, for, from you to the people, um, Christ tells us repeatedly in the Gospels, be not afraid. Oh. Um, and we are going to, through times now where there is going to be some fear. Say a word to us about how we can handle the fear, open our hearts to God's love and to do what God calls us to do. Yeah, I think my primary encouragement would be is to, um, to know that we have to rely upon the Lord to even let fear be driven out. Mm -hmm. So my fear of inadequacy, the Lord has driven out in whole new ways by Him giving me the grace that He would provide for me everything I need. So it's really growing in our trust and confidence in God that enables us to not be afraid of anything, even ridicule or whatever people might say. Uh, as we live our faith in a radiant way. And I think of, reminds me of John Paul II. When he first came out on the balcony and the world found out, what? We have a Pope that's not Italian? Who is this guy? And his first words, do not be afraid. And uh, boy, how beautiful. And of course, the scriptures are filled with do not be afraid. Jesus, so often with his apostles, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. So first of all, just to acknowledge, it's a very human response. But the divine response is, in our humanity, turn to the Lord, ask Him to refresh us and to give us His confidence so that we can go into the world and be the disciples He wants us to be. Hey, Father Odell, I got a question for you today. As a Catholic, do I believe that I'm saved? Can I lose my salvation? Every person is saved uh, because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. What we mean when we're talking about someone losing their salvation when they've committed serious sin, uh, their soul is devoid of God's sanctifying grace, which allows us to enter heaven. So that any time we remain in serious sin, we are always endangering our eternal salvation. Thank you so much, Bishop. Will you Welcome. close us with prayer? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of being called your beloved daughters and sons. We thank you for the grace of baptism that brings us into that right relationship. And when the gifts of the Holy Spirit and all the other graces that are given to us and then, of course, strengthen and confirmation and all the graces that you give us, including the Holy Eucharist. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those graces and those blessings. I pray for all the parishioners at St. Ther Therese that they might just be strengthened and renewed and for all of them within our diocese, especially in this time of transition and change, that we might be filled with great confidence in you, Heavenly Father, and that all fear will be driven out by an ever greater drawing closer to your heart 
and being like St. Therese, that through that intimacy then, she could be a great missionary in the world. And so I ask your grace and blessing upon all of the St. Teresa parishioners, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until next week, have a good and blessed week in the Lord.